to that, but I think it's a really interesting thing for the state of Kentucky to pursue to get more early stage investors active. All right, so let's talk all things Unitonomy. I think most people here know me, but for those that are maybe joining in or watching the recording that aren't even aware of me, they've just kind of caught wind of the WeFunder campaign. My name is Charlie Miller. I'm the founder of Unitonomy. Previously, I founded TouchCast. TouchCast is still going strong. They've gotten a whole new wind in their sails related to uh, virtual event technology thanks to the pandemic. Everything we built at TouchCast is video-based live streaming, video conferencing, video recording, it's all interactive and we sold the, the biggest companies around the world and grew a whole business through enterprise sales. Um, and now thanks to the pandemic, uh, they're uh, exploding right now. Um, I'm kind of a mix between product background and technical background. I'm less experienced on the marketing and sales side but learning more and more every day on those aspects. Uh, I'm getting pretty good on the marketing side and I got some good news on the sales coming up. So today's agenda, we're going to be talking past, present, future, and we'll do some Q&A. Uh, that's basically how this will run. Uh, I've mentioned that if you ever have uh, a question, you can note it in the chat. Once we get to the q and I'll kind of read through those questions as they come up. Otherwise, you can just unmute yourself and ask them directly. Uh, don't be bashful. All right, so let's start with past year in review of our progress at Unitonomy. This is the general timeline of the company, and not to jump into all the details, but we basically had the idea back in 2019 uh, while I was at TouchCast thinking we got to do something instead of video, but really for text-based communications to really help people work better together, especially for people doing remote work like myself. What can we do to augment communication so that's more effective and more efficient? And that kind of led us into the idea of how do you improve work culture in general? If we can improve communication, can we improve culture? From there, we started developing our engine to augment communication. We got into the uh, vote accelerator here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, by the turn of 2020, um, we had some momentum finishing up that engine, getting our beta products ready, started raising some money. And then, uh-oh, the pandemic hit. That's when we really started having to look at our playbook and change some things up. Uh, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more here. So we got that beta engine going. I'll give you an overview of what that looks like here in a second and the progress on that. Uh, we started our fundraising on that safe round right before the pandemic started. We basically paused that, realizing we'd probably be spinning our wheels if we were out there trying to raise money with the craziness there in March and April. So we really just focused on the products. Our first two product experiments were B2B products. One was Org Vitals. This is where we look at analytics in terms of culture and collaboration and how employees feel about their companies. We have Get Commit which is looking to augment communication in the sense of capturing soft knowledge and hard knowledge and making sure that transfers well to large organizations. Uh, as the pandemic was unfolding, we tried to start getting people into those betas. We realized it's going to be really tricky to sell inside big organizations right now, even small organizations. they got bigger problems for one and two. It's just hard to build consensus around making a purchase. So we used the extra time that the pandemic gave us to really think about a single player experience. We took Git Commit technology and we made it work on a user experience level for one person. That became Glove, and I'll show you the details on Glove in a minute. Uh, and then from there, we've been really focused on finding product market fit across these three products, figuring out what's working, what's not working across the whole stack of marketing, sales, and people using it. What do they love? What do they not love? Um, and that's really where we are, and I've got a lot of updates on that piece. Ding dong. Another person. All right, so uh, about uh, in August, we started up the WeFunder campaign uh, to continue that safe round, but kind of going shotgun approach of opening up to people all over the world so they can invest small or large, and, and that's been really fruitful. At the same time, we ended up winning uh, the Render Competition, which is a new institutional investor here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, that liked what we were doing. And uh, out of 200 teams, we were named one of the winners, and that was exciting. That was another $100,000 and quite a bit of help and perks on the startup side uh, pushing us along, which is great. So more about that engine. I like to kind of compare it to the self-driving cars. Here's how we've been developing it so far. The green ones are done. The gold ones are where we see things going. And this is kind of the engine behind all of our products where we want to make sure that with the age of information overload, we really understand how to capture that communication and how we can make sense of it for people. Um, I'm not going to go through every detail in here, but it's really about capturing information and then organizing it. And as we see it, we had to develop the manual system first. Now we're adding automation, but where we really want to get to is what we call self-driving. That's the idea where we're able to scan information, all the communication, and really organize it for people, produce digests of what's important for people, 
Um, and that's kind of a holy grail. But we got a long road to get to that point. And I'm really excited about some of the early traction we're getting from our products. So let's talk about the present here. Uh, both how we're pitching the company, how we're positioning our products, and the WeFunder campaign in general. A lot of this will be for potential investors that are watching the recording, so bear with me for a second. Our product glove, that single player one I mentioned, that appears to be remarkable. It's really early, it's in beta, we haven't advertised it yet, but we already have some users that really love it. One so much that she went and invested in the WeFunder campaign. Tells me we're doing something really right. We've also seen people tell other people about it, literally making it remarkable. That's a really important sign for an early stage product. Um, now there's only you know, hundreds of users inside Glove, but the ad campaigns that we've been designing for a little while with an outside party called Rise Marketing here in Louisville are locked and loaded to start experimenting across Facebook and Instagram and Gmail to really get people in there and see what works in terms of converting them and those marketing campaigns. And then in January, we're going to start spending uh, really to push on those the campaigns that seem to be working well to drive usage of Glove uh, and, and start to prove out the unit economics. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. For Org Vitals, we've really found product market fit, it seems. We were trying to sell Org Vitals to organizations to use with the people they already had inside their company. But the question we kept getting was, are you going to give us the insights on this data? Will your system do that? And the truth is, not really. And then they, the next question was, do we action how to use this data to actually improve their culture? No, that's not what Org Vitals does. What we've realized is that they really need a culture consultant to work with them to get the ROI on Org Vitals. But the culture consultant does a few other things. It provides a safety barrier, almost like a firewall, so when people are filling out these assessments, they know it's the consultant reviewing the data, not their boss. That makes a lot of sense. Two, when we started doing customer discovery with these consultants, it became very clear they're working out a survey monkey with spreadsheets and business intelligence tools, spending hours and hours making visualizations of this data and sitting down with a presentation deck to walk their clients through to understand how to improve their culture. We can do all that through Org Vitals. We can make Org Vitals an end-to-end -end solution that becomes the go-to tool for these consultants to use with their clients. That means we're selling to the consultants and selling through the consultants for the organizations. Uh, it's been night and day in terms of the traction and sales when we've started to use this model in the last four to six weeks. Uh, we would knock on a hundred doors of organizations trying to sell Org Vitals and we didn't know who had a bad culture and who had a good culture and then even when we got through to them we didn't know if they were actually budgeting toward this or if there's anyone wearing a hat in the organization to improve culture. That's totally changed. Now when we knock on the door of one of these culture consultants they realize they're working in these old tools that are tedious and taking lots of time. They're absolutely willing to take a meeting to see how we can save them time and help them with their clients. They see what we're doing, there's no education gap. They get it immediately. And they're ready to start deploying it to their clients like next week, which is awesome. Uh, I would say of every five uh, outbound messages I send to a culture consultant, four of them are ready to take a meeting within the next week. That's fantastic. Uh, so what we just signed our first contract through this model um, with a, uh, an end organization where the organization contracts the, the consultant. The consultant then gives us a kickback on that. We're letting the consultants actually do the pricing, knowing that we then give them a 40% kickback on however they price it to incentivize them to charge as much as they possibly can to use Org Vitals. We basically see the Org Vitals deployment happening in two stages. One is a baseline assessment stage, which is a flat fee where the organization starts using it. But then to get the perpetual analytics running over the course of a year, they sign an additional agreement. It's obviously for much more money. Uh, and so far, no one's balking at that. So all good signs across the entire funnel of getting consultants to use our vitals. So that's really starting to feel like product market fit. Uh, and to make uh, the most exciting piece about this, to get Unitonomy as a whole company basically to a profitable stage, the math looks like we need about 20 consultants using our vitals. Uh, assuming each of those clients have somewhere between two and five customers that they would be using it with. Um, so that's really exciting. We'll see if that math pans out next year. But uh, it's a, a really great path for us as we angle toward that on the Org Vitals front. From there, uh, we're rethinking the user experience of Git Commit. Oops. Git Commit is our other product. That's kind of the multiplayer version of Glove. Um, as good as it is to find the product market fit with Org Vitals, we have to realize we have not found that with Git Commit, so we're rethinking it. We've developed some real smarts on the back end with how our engine learns on how to connect all the information that comes in from a company. We've done some really nice things with how we're able to pull information out of people with the Slack integration. And also we have the same mechanism where people can just email into it like Glove is based around. 
The trick is the user experience just feels too tedious to people. It's too much text. It's, it doesn't have the stickiness that we're looking for like a great product needs. So I'm going to tell you about what we're rethinking there with something we're calling Station. Uh, right now there's no timeline for us to even pursue developing it as we really focus on marketing glove and selling org vitals. But uh, through the early customer discovery of Station, we're getting some really strong signals that people are really curious about it. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And that leads me to where we are of rethinking our positioning. We've been about culture management software on our website and all of our statements to date. We've done a really good job building up SEO. We're number one in the world for culture management. And that blows most people's mind considering that we're a startup. So we did that really well. The bad news about that is I see us angling more toward the statement of software for individuals and organizations with information overload. That seems to be the thing that ties these things together. Now, I just got out of a meeting today with Doe Anderson here in Louisville, Kentucky that's helping us on this positioning piece pro bono through the render investment, which is really great. <clears throat> Their advice is, you know what, keep Unitonic behind the curtain a la Atlassian. That's for investors to go look at if they really want to understand who's behind all this stuff. But the truth is, let's really break these products up and sell them more separately. Let each product be its own brand, almost like it feeling like its own startup, um, and, and really push things in that manner. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So that's something we'll be thinking about next year. So uh, let's talk Org Vitals now as I go through the pitch of all the existing products. Org Vitals is the end-to-end -end culture assessment system for culture consultants. This is that pivot that we found uh, with Org Vitals. I'm not going to go through every detail here, but if you're new to Unitonomy and what we're doing with Org Vitals, this is a research backed system developed with a researcher at University of Louisville named Dr. Brad Shuck. We ask perpetual questions on a basis of every day uh, to keep assessing how people are feeling about their work, their collaborations, and the culture. What's really unique to Org Vitals, opposed to other surveys or other people assessments, we look at the employee experience across the remote work factor, understanding how people feel connected to the other employees, their sense of capacity, their sense of stress. On top of that, also proprietary to us, is really looking at collaboration. We create a network map of how everyone collaborates across the company. And on top of that, we start to assess people's potential and performance as a collaborator. Uh, when we show this to those culture consultants, they completely geek out on this because no one offers this stuff. That is basically what we're doing with Org Vitals. This is what it looks like in Slack, people clicking buttons that agree or disagree with questions. It's really seamless. We have one in organization in London that's looking at Org Vitals right now, 1,400 people. These are not knowledge workers. We always thought we were building a system for knowledge workers, and it turns out a lot of these participants, the employees, work in prison yards. They ha are stuck on their phones. They don't have email addresses. So uh, that's always one of the fun surprises you get when you have a big customer on the line. But that consultant thinks um, and they might want to deploy this whole thing, which is exciting. Uh, we would just have to introduce some SMS text notifications so people answer these questions on their phone, which we're ready to do. This gives you a sense of what the dashboards look like as the data starts to fill out within Org Vitals. Again, this is really going to be for the consultant to manage now. The consultant will be able to export all of these data visualizations right into 16.9 images that go right into their slide deck presentations for their clients. The consultants love that because that's going to save them four or five hours, usually, when they're creating visualizations for these type of graphs. And that's what the culture analytics look like. We're big on matrices. There's lots of competition out there when you think about people analytics. Uh, and they all get pretty pricey pretty quickly for the most part. I think what's unique to us now is really targeting the consultants on top of our proprietary pieces of understanding collaboration. Um, and I'm really bullish now on that we found that fit of pushing org vitals in the new year. All right, time to shift to Glove. Like I said, Glove has turned out to be remarkable, and we're just about to stand up some ad campaigns to really drive usage. Everything you email yourself organized for you. That's Glove. Why do people still email themselves in the year 2020? It's a big question I get. Well, I think it's for a few reasons. Yeah, we have voice technology like the Siri's and Alexa's out there, but they get things wrong and they can get a link to save their life if you're trying to tell, hey, remind me to look at this thing. They just can't do that. The other thing is speed. When you pull out your to-do apps, your note-taking apps, it takes a lot of clicks, usually, to leave the note. Um, what people love about emailing themselves, especially if they're really busy, they can just pull out their phone, whether it's the middle of the night or they're with their kids or whatever it is, they can pull out their phone and from any app, from anywhere, they can send a quick reminder to themselves and it just works for them. There's about 80 million people in the world with this habit, it turns out, as we looked into some research. 
Glove is going to be the fastest way to email yourself. All you have to do is write at glove.com and we'll categorize it for you based on however you tag the email. So if you address it to kids at glove.com, it'll go into a new list called kids. You don't have to set up anything in advance. You don't have to create any filters. It doesn't require a new email address. It just works. Uh, I had one investor tell me this is really clever. I had a different investor tell me this is our lightning bolt wedge into the market of how people work. Here's uh, the competition out there. It's like I said, it's everything from smart bookmarking apps to note taking apps to do apps and some of the new email systems. But nobody focuses on what we focus on, which is this mechanic of emailing yourself with the address. Even these uh, smart email systems, they're really based on correspondence. They're not designed to help you manage yourself. and That's going to be a great for Glove to stand out in the crowd. Um, one thing before I get into Git Commit, one thing that we're pushing with Glove right now in December that you should tell your friends about. Hey, are you coming up with gift lists for your loved ones for the holidays? Well, guess what? Use Glove. You can just send gifts at glove.com an email and you'll have a shopping list ready for whenever you start to do your shopping. You see something as you're walking by, take a picture of it, send it to gifts at glove.com. You see a tweet with some cool product review, forward it to gifts at glove.com. It's so fast, it's so seamless, and it organizes everything for you. And the best part about Glove, we've made it all really visual. It doesn't look like email. It's not text-based. It's now visual-based. You see images from all the links. It's really great. If you haven't tried it, please do. Uh, I think it's going to be a hit, and we're really excited about that driving you into me. All right, so let's get to the one that's not the hit, Get Commit. That's where we're struggling to find the fit. So we're rethinking it. We're calling it a station right now. The idea is we want to turn your work into timelines. When you think about communication and planning and project managing and to-do apps, it's all looking at the future, and we're inverting that. We want to automate capturing what you're working on and all your efforts and show it on a timeline to visualize your past. It's very different. Here's the old git commit. We can basically enable pulling and pushing information into the system, but as you can see, it looks a little bit like a trail. It's a card-based system. You can, uh, we pull information in by asking questions, kind of like org vitals and, and git commit. Hey, what are you working on? Uh, why? How do you feel about your work this week? What did you learn this week? What didn't go right? All that can happen in the Slack integration or just through email. That's us pulling information out. With pushing, you can email into the system or use the Slack shortcut to forward information to the system with one click. Pretty nice. Like Glove, you can just address something to say, Oh, uh, marketing at getcommit.com and go into a marketing repository for everyone on the marketing team to have access to. It's a great way of documenting decisions or big links that everyone's working on, like files. But the user experience isn't really working. It's just, it seems to be too much for people or it's not organized the way they can wrap their mind around it. So that's why we're starting to rethink it. I think I went over most of this, but I want to touch on one more piece. We built out some really so nice sophistication on the back end of git commit. The most important piece is that when you push or pull information that goes into the git commit system for your company, we have our AI on the back end understanding what that thing is so that we can automatically draw connections to understand how all the information and knowledge is related to each other. And we can visualize that in network maps. So when you do a search for something, we can visualize how it's all connected. Uh, it could be a part number where you type in a part number and it brings up all the documentation across your company for part numbers for that specific one. And it's really neat. Instead of doing a text-based search like in Google where it's all just text in a hierarchy, a vertical hierarchy, we're going to give you this network map so that you can find breadcrumbs. That way if you know you go in this direction and it's getting more and more relevant to what you're looking for, you know you're on the right trail. We don't want to lose that and I'm going to talk more about that in a second. There's a lot of competition out there when you think about anything from knowledge management or companies are trying to augment communication or announcement feeds, everything from the classic SharePoints out there. Uh, so we got to stand out and we're not doing a good enough job of that. So that's one reason we're pivoting here. So let me introduce Station real quickly. And again, there's no timeline for this, but and we're in the early phases of doing customer discovery based on these early mock-ups. Uh, but we're getting some strong signals that people are very curious about it, which I like. Oh yeah, the, the mantra, turn your work into timelines. So introducing Station. It's a Chrome extension, so that whether you're using Microsoft Edge or Chrome or any of the other browsers, they're almost all compatible with Chrome extensions now. The idea is anytime you open a new tab in your browser, you see Station. And you're going to see one or two things. Either you're going to be asked that question where we want to pull information out, or you're going to see timelines. 
And I'll show you that in a second. You can bypass the question if you want to. You don't have to answer it. These are also customizable. So every company or team can decide what questions they want to ask, when they want to ask them, or don't ask any of them. But the idea is some people need to be kind of prodded to proactively submit information. Here's good morning, what's on your plate today? You can see what your other colleagues responded as they float around on the screen. Again, anytime you open a new tab, you'd see something like this, but this question is completely optional. Otherwise, what you see is this. In a glance, you can get a sense of your daily timeline and your colleagues' timeline. We're going to make Station work great for just one person all by themselves just to help people document what they've accomplished. Most of this is done through automation, whether you answer those questions or you've connected things like your calendar, your Google Docs, your Microsoft tools, all those things will automatically create signals that we didn't document automatically for you in your personal timeline here. But it's a new way of looking at what your team's doing opposed to your calendar. Right now when you look at a calendar, all you see is meetings. And if you try to look at everyone else's day on your team, it's, it, your mind explodes. You can't understand it. This is a really, really quick view as you go about your browsing stuff every so often. You're just going to really get a nice glimpse of what your team's kind of doing generally. If you're using this all by yourself because you're a contractor, you're an artist, you're a solo entrepreneur, whatever you are, I think there's still a lot of importance here of just documenting your time because everyone has that feeling of accomplishment and know what they've actually done. And then we can create some really nice email reports on a weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. Here's what you accomplished. Here's what came into your system in terms of you and your effort. Now the other view for this is projects. Uh, especially for people collaborating, again, through automation, we can capture a lot of important things in terms of the files that are being shared, the links that are being shared, decisions that got made, whiteboards that got photographed. All these things can sit on a project timeline, and it's a new way of thinking about knowledge management through the context of timelines. This is a weak timeline for a certain project. You can have as many projects as you want. They can organize them however they want, and again, through automation and integrations, this thing kind of creates itself, and it's a really nice visual to understand what's actually being done. That's it for the products. The team's looking like this. Uh, we, we scaled down our burn rate a little bit. Uh, it's me and Max over in Ukraine with three other full-time people developing these things. We have a bunch of people helping us uh, across the operation, including Mike, who I know is on right now. He helps us on all the legal accounting stuff, so I don't have to worry about that overhead. Uh, Chris advises on all the technical pieces uh, with Max. And then uh, Britton, who's also on today. Hi, Britton, here in Louisville with me. Uh, she helps on content and is pushing on the sales of Org Vitals right now. We, uh, to scale our operation, we have a bunch of people working on sales commissions, really pushing Org Vitals. Uh, and as we develop the um, pieces with the consultants, uh, I see that really scaling up pretty quickly. No plans right now on how or when we're going to add more people to the team or even scale up the Ukraine team again. Uh, I think right now we all want to prove that there's plenty of revenue coming through the Org Vitals work and see what kind of traction we get through Glove with the ad campaigns in January and February before we make any decisions on headcount. So let's talk future. Goals for Q1 and 2021. Well, the first one is pushing Org Vitals sales and pivoting the UX to really be that end-to-end -end solution for consultants. Two, we got to prove the unit economics behind Glove. And three, we want to develop the new front end of Get Commit Station. And those are honestly in priority, one, two, three. The fourth thing that's going to be happening is we're going to close that WeFunder in the safe round at some point. Um, right now it's scheduled to end in February. That feels pretty comfortable. We'll see how it's going. If we end up at running some ads against to pull in more investors, really maybe to fund uh, the development of station, uh, then we might extend that. We'll just have to see how things are going. But we've already raised uh, the minimum that we wanted to raise, and we feel good about the future. All right, so goals for 2021 in general, really it's about building on the traction we're getting. We're getting the right signals right now, but now we need to prove it out in terms of the numbers. We want to make sure our products retain people, especially as the consultants are using it with their clients, uh, Org Vitals. we got to make sure that those clients are happy with it. Uh, they're using it. The consultants see the value in month over month, quarter after quarter, year after year uses of Org Vitals. So that's something we'll be tracking. And then at some point, we got to raise a seed round, and that's going to be important for everyone on this call because you all have agreed to a safe, and that safe gets its valuation to the point of that seed raise. Uh, so hopefully we're going to have the traction and the retention to raise that seed round sometime in 2021 and hopefully sooner rather than later. Although if 2020 has taught me anything is don't take anything for granted and don't assume anything's on a specific timeline, uh, funny enough. So um, we'll see what other curveballs are in store for us. I did not think I'd be starting a startup when uh, a pandemic was going to be unfolding, um, but uh, here we are. All right, so let's shift to a little Q&A. Um, hopefully that wasn't too long-winded. I have that habit sometimes. 
Uh, let me stop presenting. I don't see anything in the chat, so feel free to unmute if you have a question, if anyone's a brave soul here. Um, we'd love to hear from you all and get any thoughts, opinions, hard questions, softball questions. Don't tell me I was <laughs> muted for 30 minutes and no one heard me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we all heard you. Okay, good. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Good to, good to see you and uh, hear about all the progress you guys are making. Wondering about integration. Um, my question is always, where are you on integration with the timeline on Microsoft? Yeah, so great question. You didn't see Microsoft Teams listed anywhere in the stuff I just showed you. Here's the good news and or maybe the bad news for you. Okay. Uh, through customer discovery, and our own sales processes, we started to learn two different things. One was, hey, if we lead sales and we talk about integrations, they become the organization became very fixated on that thing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to an organization tomorrow that's one of those from the summer that like they kept saying, come back to us when you have the Microsoft Teams integration. Well, we did, ran an experiment. What happens if we don't mention integration at all when we talk about org vitals? Turns out no one worries about it. They're ready to go ahead and start using it. So we realized we were setting the wrong expectation to making it seem like you had to have an integration for org vitals to be effective, and it's just not true. The other thing we've learned now through customer discovery, and this is for both Git Commit and org vitals, we thought way back when we started doing autonomy, wouldn't it be great if we had Slack and Microsoft Teams integration so you could just answer a question as they come to you? It's really easy. It's right there. You don't have to open up any apps. You don't have to see a notification in your email. It just kind of works. Sounds great to me, but... I guess the beauty of customer discovery and, and all the sales stuff we've been doing is we realize, and this is probably influenced because of the pandemic, people are sick of messages in Slack and Microsoft Teams. They don't want more noise in there. They don't want more questions. They don't want more messages to respond to. So we're actually thinking the opposite direction here. Let's give the flexibility to these consultants who know these organizations the best to set up the right intervals to respond to org vitals. It can be daily questions. It can be weekly questions. It can be monthly. What we have inside the Org Vitals dashboard is essentially an inbox with all your little things you need to respond to. You can do it whenever you want to. At most, it'll take a few minutes at a time. Uh, so now what we're focused on is a notification strategy that either goes to your phone or your email at the interval that the customer sets, and the person comes in and takes a few minutes to respond to the questions. So no longer looking at Microsoft Teams integration or Slack. The good thing for us, technically, is those integrations create a lot of overhead. Slack is constantly changing their system. We have to update our system to make it work the right ways. Microsoft Teams integration is just a beast, and that's why we haven't pursued it, because it's just not a well-documented, well-developed thing for external developers to work on top of. So that's kind of where we are with thinking about that. So um, I guess in some sense, it's a little bit of a bummer, uh, but I think in the good news is uh, it's going to save us time maintaining it, and especially if customers don't really want that, or at least the majority of customers don't really want that, then that's a really good thing. I'm excited about my meeting tomorrow because I'll be going back to this group and saying, look, we're not going to do Microsoft Teams integration at all. I want you all to try using this through email and see how they respond. Interesting. I mean, I guess, you know, through customer discovery, if people are experiencing that it's, it's not a challenge, it's not an issue, I mean, that makes that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think long term, there's something we have to look at, which is how do we continue to incentivize the people to respond to these cultural assessment questions? Will they get burned out month after month answering some questions? It's, it's efficiency. It's, yeah. it's not that's the one thing that, I mean, that I feel like we've observed is that when you have multiple places, multiple clicks, multiple items that you have to do that decreases traffic, but maybe, like you said, a text implementation or email implementation yeah. makes it simple enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing we're hearing from the culture consultants is that they're not too worried about it because the, what they've experienced being a third party operator running these assessments mm -hmm. in the company is that there's it's almost like there's some authority here asking you to do this and that it, and they understand that it's important and they also understand that that uh, consultant prov provides that firewall of anonymity for safety Therefore, people are more likely to respond for all those reasons. They're not too worried about the engagement factor if they're the ones running the show. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good question. All right, any other pressing questions? Anything else? Anybody wants to know business level, product level? Uh, something I'll say for the recording, and I think everyone on this call 
uh, probably is familiar with the, the safe node. But I've gotten lots of questions through WeFunder for people who've never even invested in a safe. Um, and I'll, I'll say just a few notes on that. Um, no valuation set that gets punted until the seed round, which is really nice. Um, it's a pretty standard format that startups are using in early stages because of the ability to quickly uh, get uh, to an agreement without having to debate valuation. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess, on that note. Trying to think what other uh, important details for Unitonomy will be coming up anytime soon. Um, I'm always getting a knock on the door from institutional investors uh, tracking us, and I, we've got a very healthy pipeline of relationships to return to when we're ready for that seed round. I probably have had in ballpark 30 to 40 VCs of different natures in different locations reach out with another 20 to 30 that I know through personal connections that I've been talking to. So there's a big group of people and institutions looking at us, some really hot, uh, but they all want the same thing. They all want to kind of us prove out product market fit to some degree that we're onto something with one of these products, if not multiple products. And that's, um, that's kind of the game. Um, but I think we're going to be close to proving that. I think one trick is Org Vitals gives us some great baseline revenue to basically turn this into uh, Unitonomy into uh, a sustainable company. That's great. I think we can prove that out in 2021. But it's a small market if you think about culture consultants selling up into these companies. I would think, and I haven't done the full research on this, but I'm going to imagine the TAM isn't like what it's going to be for GLUB. People email themselves. There's going to be 80 million people like that in the world. Well, culture consultants are probably in the thousands. So it's going to be a smaller market to sell to, so that may not be as attractive to an institutional investor in grand scheme of things. Um, so we'll have to see kind of what's the right pitch, what's the right message in that seed round once we arrive there. Uh, and then it remains to be seen for a station really what that would look like in terms of any product market fit and, and when that even arrives on the scene. So you know, there's plenty of questions that we need to answer before we even start thinking about a seed round. I think we can get a lot of those answers in Q1. Any predictions on what our biggest curveball is going to be in 2021? Certainly didn't see the pandemic coming. We'll see what Let's see what else we got in store this year. I would love to know if anyone has a crystal ball. Well, I appreciate everyone attending here today. Uh, feel free to share this recording. Feel free to email me with any questions that come to mind over the next many days. Um, if you'd ever want to jump on a call with me and talk on it, um, please let me know. Um, and thank you so much for your belief and faith in me and your autonomy. I think um, it has been a tricky year with uh, the pandemic and doing all this, but uh, uh, I'm certainly feeling really good about things now that we feel the traction with uh, uh, Org Vitals and uh, people getting a uh, glove going here. Hey, Andrew, I see you turn your camera on. Do you have a question? <laughs> no questions, Charlie. I was just going to say thanks for the presentation. It was uh, very helpful. Thank okay, you. awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and thank you, Jolie. I see a comment over here in the chat. Um, all right, everybody. I'm going to uh, end this and end the recording so people aren't watching a video that's too crazy long. Happy holidays. We Hey, we all made it through 2020. Good luck to everyone in 2021. And I, uh, I like doing this. I hope to do another presentation like this maybe in... Uh, uh, late February, late March, uh, sometime in Q1 as we, we learn more about all of this. In the meantime, spread the word on GLVVVV glove, baby. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you very much.